Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Soil School. You know, in recent years, soil testing and mapping technology has taken a tremendous leap forward. On this episode, we travel to Ontario Diagnostic Days at the University of Guelph's Ridgetown campus to learn about groundwork soil testing, soil optics, and SWAT maps. We had rapid fire sessions with representatives from each technology. Here we go. Now catching up with Caleb Niemeyer from Wood Drill Farms, and he's going to tell us about groundwork soil testing. All right, yeah, my name is Caleb, and I'm from Wood Drill. Um, so yeah, we've developed a digital soil mapping service to farmers that we kind of tested out on first our own farming operation, and then have gone out and now are, are providing it to neighboring farms as well. Um, so what we do is we provide a digital soil type map of a grower's field, and so we'll, what we'll go out and we'll first collect different layers of data. So we'll collect topography, uh, imagery, we'll collect um, electrical connectivity that we drag behind a sled, and also yield if we have uh, good yield data as well. And so we'll take all those different layers of data and we'll select sample points uh, across the farm. And so we end up taking about 26 or so uh, sample points per 100 acres. And then we actually go out with this machine right here, which is our hydraulic soil coring machine. It goes down about uh, three or four feet in depth and puts, our, puts that soil into a uh, plastic sleeve like I have right here, which we then bring back to our lab in Guelph and we open them up uh, like you have right here and, um, uh, and we take pictures of them and we give it a soil type name according to those old uh, soil type names that the, when, the, when the province was mapping out soils in the 1940s through 1980s, um, they, they developed all these names and so each name integrates both the, what, the, what the moisture is and also the soil texture, right? So it's not just the sand, silt, and clay. It's not just how moist it is. It's both of those together provide that soil type name. And so those names are going to be really useful in providing management zones for precision agriculture. So we can vary our rate of seed, fertilizer, or chemical based off of what the soil type is uh, in every farm. We also send off the top six inches of each sample uh, to the lab for fertility analysis. And then what, when we get those results back, we're able to use some machine learning software to extrapolate um, the points that we sampled uh, with the underlying data that we collect across the field so that's the topography imagery yield and uh, electrical connectivity and so we do some machine learning software we use some machine learning software in the background to help us uh, predict out um, how those uh, properties change across the landscape so at the end of the day the grower is going to get the soil type map as well as those uh, different fertility maps that we get across the field um, and so you'll notice that uh, from these two cores here I just took uh, right here while I was getting set up in Ridgetown uh, for diagnostic days. One has about four, four inches in, uh, in topsoil depth. The other one has close to uh, 13 inches. Um, and they're from a fairly flat, uniform area. Um, but uh, this one here is a lot more sand uh, over, top of, uh, over top of the clay versus the other one is just a Brookston clay, so pretty heavy clay all the way through. So it integrates both how the, how the topography lies in the landscape, how where the soil and water are going to be moving, as well as the material that the that the glaciers have left here uh, for us to farm. Next up is Carla Jackson from Devron. Carla, tell us about the soil optic sensor. Yeah, so this is the soil optic sensor here. Devron's one of the providers here in Ontario. Um, this is the sensor that we drive up and down the field, about 40 foot swaths. Uh, the sensor is capturing the natural gamma radiation emitting from the soil. And it is collecting a point every few seconds, which is equivalent to about 335 points per acre. So we drive up and down the field, the sensor is collecting the data, we have a mobile RTK sensor on our gator strapped to it, and we also have a base RTK station in the field. Uh, the purpose of that is to collect the uh, elevation of the field. Um, this is beneficial for anyone who doesn't have any RTK technology on any of their equipment. Um, so once we drive up and down the field, the sensor's doing its thing, it's collecting the data, uh, we get a scan on a computer at the end of it. The program then tells us where to go in the field. Uh, the target is the highs, the lows, and a few little and a few other areas in between. So we're trying to capture the extremities and the averages as well. Uh, we can also adjust it to capture some of the anomalies that uh, we see in the field as well. 
Um, so then we collect about one soil sample bag per eight acres. Um, and we capture also three texture samples. It's roughly, I think, about three texture samples per 100 acres, and that adjusts based off of the field size as well. So we want to make sure that we're capturing um, the variability in the field as well. So we've done the scan, we go and collect the soil samples. The soil samples go off to the soil lab for analysis of whatever uh, lab package you've ordered for, for your basic macros as well as your, your micronutrients as well. The scan data goes off to Soil Optics, who are in Tavistock, Ontario. They do their processing of the data, and once we receive the lab results back, we send that to Soil Optics, who then run it through their through their models and, and merge the scan with the lab results that we have back. The lab, uh, the soil samples are beneficial for ground truthing what some of the scan is capturing. Once they've done their processing, um, they send it back to us at Devron uh, and we produce the soil maps, which will give you the elevation from the RTK sensors uh, and also all the maps for the nutrients that were tested. So you get your pH, your organic matter, your P, your K, and then if you get any micros like your borons and, and your coppers. Um, other layers available with it too are the plant available water and leakability layers. And those are valuable for uh, potato growers that are doing any irrigation management, um, but also for anyone who's looking at making in-season adjustments or applications. So the plant available water will tell you the areas of the fields um, that are naturally occurring that will hold more moisture and areas that will leach that moisture. So that could be beneficial for placing more seed, less seed, uh, more nitrogen, less nitrogen, but then also too for some disease management as well. So if you know your soil is holding more moisture, you may be at risk for more white mold and beans, for instance, uh, and, uh, and other crops like that. Um, so those are just some of the layers, as well as you get the, the texture maps back as well. So you get to the breakdown of how much of your field is clay, uh, silt, loam, and sand. Um, that just helps with more knowledge of an understanding of the variability uh, naturally occurring in your field. Now joined by Brandon Glenny from Glenny Ag Services. Um, Brandon, tell us about soil, water, and topography maps. Soil, water, and topography maps are developed by a company called Craftimistic Technologies in Saskatchewan. And so we've brought it here to Ontario. There's four service providers currently in Ontario. Um, so we try to identify spatial variability within fields, um, looking at soil electrical conductivity data, and also to um, adding topography with that. So after we've run the scanner over the field and we've collected that EC data, that data then goes off to the SWAT office and they add topography with it and send it back to me in a series of maps so that I can then forward that and go to the field and ground truth which map is gonna fit best for that farm. So we'll look at things like yield data, um, bare ground imagery maybe before we go to the field and then we'll go to the field and we'll pull some soil cores, look at the different soil textures, also look at the topography and find which map fits best for that farm. Then after that, we then go and soil sample that farm from a predetermined set of points um, and send that to the lab obviously and then we get back basically a, a fertilizer response or seeding response map, um, kind of like a soil potential map. So then also, also with that, then the grower also gets access to the SWAT records app on their phone or iPad. And then they can also take that same map and go to the field and scout and see if there's maybe some management opportunities um, within those spatial variability zones. So within the SWAT records app, then again, growers can go to the field, identify maybe management opportunities using those management zones. So they could maybe do in-season in uh, variable rate nitrogen or possibly any other uh, micronutrients that they might be seeing deficiencies for. Um, also too, the other big thing with SWAT is the opportunity to do variable rate seeding um, so that we can do variable rate wheat, beans, and soybean, or wheat, soybeans, and corn. Um, and then also too with that, we can use what they call, what we've come out now with the SWAT cam and then go over the, go over the field with the SWAT cam and uh, take a look at the plant stands and then adjust our seeding rates accordingly for the next year within those zones.